Hey guys, what is up? Lee the Lance Corporal here, and I'm making another tutorial video. This one's a bit long overdue, but this is for Ares. Now, Ares is the backbone to any true Zeus. Uh, this is going to be the latest version. I know some other famous Zeuses out there, like Luton 09, they have some older rolled back versions that they uh, have, which... You know, it's slightly different. It just changes up a few things in the utilities tab mainly. But other than that, um, Ares is a great way to start with some of the more advanced stuff you can do in the Zeus interface with specific mods. Uh, the mod was created by someone named Anton, and it was last updated on 10 slash 6 slash 2015. It's a very small mod. But it adds such a big impact on Zeusing. And I'm just going to go through the different options available. And again, if you were to start using these mods between Ares and Achilles, definitely start with Ares just to figure things out and then move yourself to Achilles. That way it's a bit more familiar for you and you know kind of what we're doing. So the first part, AI behaviors. I'm going to spawn myself a mortar position to really get this one on the road because uh, with AI behaviors the first thing you can do is you can create an artillery target and then fire artillery you just kind of click it you can designate how many shells designate what type of ammo and then set the target and then each one of those you place is uh, target alpha bravo charlie or you can do artillery fire mission where you place it you then select a battery so that's more of if you want to do pinpoint fire from a specific turret you would generally use the fire artillery but if you're like on the map and you're trying to you know look over to your mortar battery you'd then use artillery fire mission select it it would select the mortar and then would put you back in that position and you can set the specific coordinates as well within Ares. so you can also set the amount of guns available but they all have to be the same type and then you can you know set a grid position but otherwise I always preferred, when I used Ares a lot, to just do fire artillery, set the shell, okay, and then he'll shoot it very quick. And you can do multiple shells, you can fire smokes, um, I'll go through a few advanced topics I like to use as it, with Ares, because right now I've really gotten into Achilles with a bunch of custom compositions, but boom! <laughs> so that's uh, the base stuff, now I'm going to spawn another infantry squad to show up the next one. So let's say we want to have these guys quickly garrison an area. Well, you just click this button, garrison building instant, and then boom, it puts them into different random static positions within buildings. Uh, these buildings have to have those areas ahead of time, but also you can then take them out, and then they'll angle themselves in whichever direction around the squad lead. It's a bit difficult to make this point, but they usually sticky on one direction or one unit when you take them out, but uh, they try to, you know, follow this direction as much as they can. Uh, other commands, very simple, if you want to do a patrol, there's two ways, you can either, you know, in the previous video I showed how you can set a bunch of waypoints, set them to safe, set them to limited, so they'll start walking around. If you have Ares or Achilles, you can just, you know, put a squad down, go to modules, AI behaviors, and then you can set patrol. You can set the distance uh, between these increments and then hit the OK button. Let's go back in there just to see the rest of them. Relax, cautious, searching. Are they going to be casual like this? Are they going to be cautious, guns up? Or are they going to actively be going cover to cover? And then clockwise or counterclockwise. And then you can also set a small delay at waypoints from 15 seconds, 30 seconds in a minute. So if they want to be like overwatching different positions on mountaintops or something, however you want to put it. Uh, back to the topic of garrisons. If you want them to realistically garrison a position instead of instantly garrison, you know, add to the player base. Or let's say they're holed up in a building. You've got a squad next to them. You can just have the search and garrison button, in which case they will run in, they will pick specific positions, they'll breach in. Uh, there's a different mod called VCOM AI where they automatically do these breaches, but they'll uh, you know, pick different spots and then the rest of them will breach in. And I've always thought that this was kind of cool. Really helps to keep the player base on their toes. Other things, 
You can just have them search the building instead of garrisoning. Uh, that's really what that one's about. You can ungarrison them, which makes them immediately uh, group up and then run out of the building. One already jumped out somehow. And then surrender unit. If you need a unit for like a, you know, a civilian's not run away or whatever, uh, surrendering, basically they go into the surrender animation. Their utility becomes purple. That way, you know, CSAT, Syndicate, or anyone versus them won't shoot at them. If you uh, would then, you could go up. You can secure or release. Secure puts them in a sit down animation. Release releases them. And then just to show that sit down animation. Ready. Go back to surrender. If we do a secure, then they just sit down and then you can't interact with them. They're just stuck like that. You know, sitting around the campfire. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much it for AI behaviors. Again, pretty limited compared to Achilles, but these options alone, especially garrisoning stuff, setting quick patrols, searching a garrison, they easily can make your op 10 times better. Now let's get into Arsenal. Arsenal is always buggy. I mean, the only real things you're going to be using here is filtered, which you can, you know, set these different options. You can replace uh, an already placed down Arsenal, or you can combine it with whatever. You can add a bunch of different things. Again, honestly, I find it best to just use a full Arsenal, and then, you know, for the way I Zeus... Uh, I just counter with whatever they bring, but I also turn things like stamina on so they can't become too OP. They try to play their role, etc. The rest of the settings, it's also nice because uh, Ares adds these little icons next to what's changed. Uh, these are all a bit buggy. I mean, what these do is they create basic arsenals. However, when you go up to them and try to middle mouse click, it doesn't work. So I've never really used them. And then paste and combine, paste and recombine. That's again with specific arsenal builds and loadouts. Again, just use full, filtered, or just pre-create the arsenal in the Eden editor. Equipment. So add or remove NVGs to units. You can disable or enable night vision for specific units. Very nice. Add or remove thermals. Let's say you don't want enemies or uh, friendlies using thermals on weaponry. And trust me, even if you disable the thermals on like enemy 50 cal, it actually does mess around with the range of engagement they will use. I, again, can't give the exact formula, but they won't be like one-shotting things across the map at, you know, one and a half clicks. Lights on and off, if you want a vehicle's lights on, disabled, auto, whatever. Again, useful if you're trying to set things up. And remove weapon optics if you want to, let's say you want someone's OP scope gone, or you want, you know, something changed on the enemies or the player base, that's the way to do it. Never really use these that much. Reinforcements, again, if AI behaviors are the number one thing you use, this is going to be the second most thing you use. Uh, very simple, you create a landing zone, and then you create a rally point, and then, you know, they'll set it as Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, whatever, and then spawn units. Achilles has been really expanding on this idea, but it's great, so... You can set any of the vanilla factions, CSAT, NATO, AAF. You can set the vehicle type, and it will create a randomly generated, I'm going to use NATO so I don't get killed, unarmed scouts, uh, quad bikes, off-roads, MRAPs, armed light vehicles, your armed MRAPs, dedicated troop transport trucks, your basic shit. So I'm just going to spawn a few things. You can set the vehicle to stay at the LZ, RTB, and despawn. And then you can set specific random uh, the rally points, waypoints, and then set their unit behavior. So just setting a bunch of stuff. You know, we can get a quad bike going. Another thing, there's the hunter. They can also spawn off-roads if they want, but you don't really have control of it. Uh, in Achilles, you do, but it's a random vehicle. So this also adds a bit of unpredictability for you. And, you know, the difference in these vehicles is you can either spawn a quad bike and it'll have two people. You can spawn a hunter, which will have three or four, and or an off-road, which will only have a few. And I've noticed that it's generally increments of about five people per squad, except with these light vehicles and these armed vehicles. But uh, it more or less depends. Um, we'll talk about individual unit specifics as they come up.
So armed vehicles, again, you know, Hunter, HMG, GMG, a two-man team will get out of these vehicles, mostly. Moving up, dedicated troop transports. This usually has two or three squads of five. They'll move in. Spawn units. Down APCs. Again, usually a squad of five are within APCs. Moving in, unarmed aircraft. So, Little Birds will have, what was it, I think it's a squad of five, any small aircraft to medium-sized aircraft, like Orcas, Ghost Hawks, they'll usually have about five units. Uh, the big three helicopters that you can get for um, NATO, it's the Huron, for CSAT, it's the Taru uh, Transport, not the Taru Bench, the Transport. And for AAF, it's the Mohawk, and those usually have three squads, two to three squads of five, usually three. But uh, those are the big ones. While the rest of the choppers usually have usually have about squads of uh, just one squad of five or four. And armed choppers, it only does it doesn't do any blackfish or cashmen. It only does armed orcas for CSATs. Uh, armed Pawnees or Ghost Hawks or armed Hurons for it does you know light arm stuff it doesn't put in attack helicopters except for the AAF's Hellcat that's the only real exception and it does I don't think it does Pawnees either if I remember correctly I've never seen a Pawnee before but that's your uh, basic stuff and then the last one armed and unarmed boats that should be straightforward this spawns attack boats this spawns rubber dinghies uh, no way to do jets or anything um, however, there is some advancements in Achilles, which we'll get to in a later video. Save load, very simple. Uh, if you have a bunch of custom compositions down that you really like, you can save it, set it to, you know, a specific distance or the entire map, include AI, via empty vehicles, objects, markers, hit OK, and then you can copy this. Now, I'm going to delete all of this. get to my next point which I'm gonna skip down to utilities here just to make this point before I forget uh, four things down in the executable stuff server is server side local is client side which then loads in the server side and then all machines never use all machines just use local uh, however if you memory leak and come back then it gets a bit buggy so it's also okay to use server but local wise, again, boom, puts everything down that you saved in the save load section. Easy as that. They'll run each other over though. AI are still prone to doing stupid shit. But anyway, jumping back up. Spawn, persistent smoke biller, anything you want. This is again for realism. You can play around with these settings. There's a bunch of different smoke effects that you can do. It affects the fire, it affects the individual smoke coming out, etc. Also remember for your save and loading, you'll have to re-add stuff to the interface. We'll talk about that in a second. You can do the submarine or the trawler. Two things that I've been playing a lot with recently. Teleport. You can create a teleporter. These turn into flagpoles and you can use them to go from specific locations. So let's say... I want to get to a specific area, but I'm too lazy to have the players fly themselves, or I need to do it quickly. You can just look at this pole. It gives you quite a bit of distance for you to do it, but you just have to look at it, and then you can transport back and forth. Other things in the teleport section, you can teleport everybody. That'll piss people off. Don't do it. You can teleport everyone from the civilian group, CSAT, a specific squad, independent NATO, single unit, or Zeus. Zeus is the best. Or if you need to, you know, teleport someone that has memory leaked or something and you feel like being nice, drop down box, it shows everyone in the server, and then boom, teleport them. So that's that tab. And now the utilities tab. So add objects to Zeus. Very simple. Anything within this radius or even the entire map. Just remember, it'll add objects, players, everything that you have spawned in the Zeus interface. Uh, too much stuff in the interface causes lag for people. So I always like to have all my units on the interface, but I try to minimize my objects and everything else that I don't need. That way I can try to save some frames. Change player side if you want 
someone to join a different faction, be it AI or player. You can set that, you can set for the entire group or select a player only, and then he'll turn into that faction and shit will happen. Change weather. This is meant to be a dynamic system for it to change, but you can also set overcast, uh, different percentages of rain and humidity, fog if you want any smooth transition or how like the you know specific for the fog and then the altitude and then boom this one makes it a bit more instantaneous oh we just made some real shit weather didn't we uh with achilles it has a more you know smoother way to do it but with this you can set really good uh zombie related weather pretty easily that's one thing Achilles still lacks, because the fog still bugs out occasionally. Now, delete LZ, RP, artillery target. Mm -hmm. Simply put, uh, especially if you memory leak out, those modules tend to disappear from your interface. If you put that down near that position, it'll get rid of it, because otherwise it shows up as a, a blank box, and it, it, it glitches out. It's not a good thing to have. Create composition. Very simple. Create... Um, Copy that. I have actually never used that one before. Not gonna lie, I don't know what it does. Because create composition you can also just do by saving right here. But it's just meant to be another option. Create composition. I will find that. I will find that if I can find it because it has to obviously have a load. Disable, enable, debug console, disable, enable simulation. Delete, we've covered that. Enable debug log, enable simulation. Execute, we've talked about that. Make Zeus invisible or visible if you want to get up close to your player base without getting shot. Remove all actions. That's if, uh, let's say you set an AI to do a custom composition script or a custom animation, that's how you can remove it. And then remove objects from Zeus if you accidentally do something, boom, you can make them all disappear. Yeah, I've never, this one's completely missed my mind, create composition, because any compositions, you just save the SQF file, in my opinion. So, hey, if you want to tell me what that means in the comment section, by all means, go ahead. But everything else is vanilla. Again, compared to Achilles, not that much. But it's still quite a bit to work with. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, I will answer them in the comments. So, thank you so much for your time and operate operationally. Take care, guys.